It's Tessa Virtue here and hi everyone. <laughs> I think it was muted there. It's Tessa Virtue and I would like to welcome you to the fall edition of Team Canada Champion Chats. I'm thrilled to have you all tuning in today and I'm so happy to be your host for today's special live chat event. As you know, this fall we officially kicked off the journey to the 2021 Summer Games and we couldn't be happier to have you all join us on the road to Tokyo. For those of you who aren't aware, <laughs> the Olympics and Paralympics normally occur every four years, going back and forth between summer and winter. In 2020, the games were, of course, postponed, which is why we're gearing up now for the Summer Olympics happening in 2021. Even though we're a little behind schedule, we're still super excited to cheer on our athletes uh, for another whole year. This is fun. Uh, for the next 45 minutes, we're going to be talking about what it means to be a champion, hearing from our incredible panel of athletes about the importance of leadership, teamwork, and community. Uh, but we also want to hear, and this is very important, we want to hear how you, the viewers at home, are enjoying the chat. So don't forget to, ch to share with us on social media using the hashtag BeAChampion. You can ask questions and messages uh, in the comments both on Facebook and on YouTube as well. I'll introduce myself. I'm Tessa Virtue, a five-time Olympic ice dance champion and proud representative of uh, Team Canada for over a decade. <laughs> I'll pass it over to our athletes now. Uh, I have to say we have an incredible panel here of some fierce, strong, resilient women, and I couldn't be more excited for the chat. It's going to be um, really inspiring. So, uh, and these may be familiar faces to some of you who have completed the Team Canada Champion Chat activities um, or challenges over the past four weeks. Uh, but let's take a moment nonetheless to say hi to our Olympic and Paralympic athletes joining us. So, Ohenawa, let's start with you. Hello, hello. I am so excited to be here. So, of course, my name is Ohenawa Kufo. Um, <laughs> that, that's impressive. Ambidextrous. I love that. Um, thanks. We're so happy to have you here, Ohenawa. Uh, over to you, Amanda. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Rummery and I am a- Woohoo, we'll be cheering for you. Amanda, did you get to explore Peru at all when you were there? A little bit, not a lot. I would have loved to explore more. I love hiking, so definitely have to go back one day to do Machu Picchu. That's the hard thing as an athlete because you're so focused, right, yeah, on, yeah. on your job. Um, how about you, Jessica? Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Tuomala and I am out in- Oh my goodness, what an incredible family, the humans and the pets here. That, that's wonderful. We can't wait to hear more of your story, Jessica. Thanks for joining us. And last but not least, over to you, Carmelina. Well, hello, everybody. Just uh, building on that. Love that. Thanks, Carmelina. And a big thank you to all of the athletes for joining us today. Your impact truly knows no bounds. It means a lot to have you here. So before we get into our chat and some hard-hitting questions, why don't we do a quick exercise to get everyone moving? That's what I'm feeling. Uh, oh, Hanawa, do you want to lead us here? You got it. So during <laughs> COVID, you know, you've been sitting a little bit. And this is some of the fun stuff I do when I just sit in and I got to get moving. You're typing all day, you got to move the hands. The next one, it's like side to side. So I'm going to just show you the exercises. I'm going to go through it side to side. And then the next one is just like marching. So just moving your feet. And if you're sitting crisscross applesauce or just sitting, you can just wiggle <laughs> your toes, you know. So we're going to do those three exercises. So we're going to start again. So wiggly hands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten of them. Now side to side. One, two, three, four. You got to have fun smiling. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. March it out. One, with the feet, two, with the toes if you can, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more time. One, Ooh. two, this is for the champions, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, side to side. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. March it out. One, last one, two. You got the three. <laughs> so 
four, one. Four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The most important thing we got to do now, hug yourself. Because you did a good job. Because we're all champions. <laughs> Love it. We need some Team Canada champion chats, uh, like sweatbands, you know? <laughs> yes. <and> some, <laughs> some little towels. <laughs> Thanks so much. I, I feel loose and, and ready to go. So I hope everyone does too, uh, tuning in. Um, okay, let's get to it. Today, we are focusing on how we work together to achieve something and work towards a common goal. Because when we have a common vision and a shared vision, it is oh so powerful. And with everything that's been going on in the world, we need leaders and we need role models in our communities. We need teamwork. How do you see your impact in the world? In sport, we think about these topics a lot, and I mean a lot. <laughs> when we're part of a team, like the Canadian Olympic or Paralympic team, we're working together to achieve this goal of doing our country proud, of making Canada proud and, and representing Canada the, to the best of our ability on the world stage. Uh, I know that, I, I mean, I'm a team of two. I was a duo with Scott, my skating partner. We had about 10 to 15 coaches who also made up our, our little village. And I remember going to the Olympics and seeing everyone walking around with their Canada gear, that maple leaf, and feeling like we were part of something bigger. And I realized then, it wasn't just about ice dance. It wasn't only even about sport. It was about how we could represent our country and what it meant to be Canadian and what it meant to stand on the world stage with, with, with the world watching and be truly Canadian, embody the things that make us um, so proud. So, you know, Carmelina, I'm thinking about you and, and on a, a much bigger team. I'd love to hear about your experience. Um, you've practiced teamwork before, but how have you practiced teamwork this fall, um, you know, through, through everything, all the chaos that's been happening, and how might students and kids at home also do the same? That's a great question. I mean, if I were to boil Getting 20... comfortable with the uncomfortable. I love words to live by, really. And I like how that has sparked some ingenuity, some creativity, um, despite feeling maybe more restricted or confined. I think that's really, really good. And those shared experiences, even, you know, if not in real life, then virtually can be really, really helpful, too. So thanks for sharing that. Oh, Henua, when we work as a team, we're often supporting the communities that we're a part of. And communities also help us individually. So there's this really beautiful cycle. Um, hence, you know, I referenced this earlier, but it takes a village for an athlete to achieve their goals. What are some of the communities you belong to? And why is this sense of community so important during times of struggle? Oh, I love that. It's, um, it's an especially important time to share that kind of kindness. And, you know, even that community of classroom champions or yep. Team Canada. I mean, here we are right now. This network is supportive and we're all there for one another. And I think lonely as it may be, we can't, we can't forget that. You know, you're, you're never alone. There are always mm -hmm. people there who care about you. Thank you for sharing that. Jessica, you led an activity this month that focused on legacy. It was amazing. Um, how do we look at legacy in sports, do you think? And to add to that, how do you look at legacy in your life outside of sport? Hmm. What we do matters. You know, it's so layered and nuanced even that you can strive for these big lofty goals, being the best of the world in, in something or being your best self, but also the details of the day-to-day -day process that lead you to the achievement of that goal or at least the pursuit of it really add up in the culmination of what makes who we are and show our characters right so i think that's really really poignant and something to consider uh, i'm going to shift gears for a moment and amanda you had a really interesting challenge that talked about flag bearers at the games and their leadership role for the team now, Scott and I had the good fortune of being flag bearers together for the 2018 opening ceremonies in Pyeongchang. And I was trying to reflect on, on that notion. And I actually thought I was looking back to the rest of the team <laughs> and thinking all the leaders were dispersed in, <laughs> in the sea in re of red and white and that we were somehow just representing them. Um, but I'm curious, why do you think it's important to look to our leaders and role models in, in our communities? It's, is it Megan, your coach's name? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's so nice. We need that sort of 
um, bolstering of support sometimes and a beacon of light to guide us, especially during times like this. When you were younger, who would you say your biggest role model was? Hmm. Your grandfather sounds like he was a pretty impressive man. Um, we have a, a question from Mrs. Ellis's grade four class at Lady Smith Intermediate in Nanaimo, BC. Hi, hi guys, great to see you. Love that classroom. Okay, so here's the question, and this is going to Jessica and Carmelina. Was it difficult to become a high-performing athlete? When did you start training, and how many hours did you put in when you started? So Jessica, let's start with you. <laughs> There's a lot of hours, guys. A lot of hours. Thanks for the question. That's a good question. That's so nice. And you, you mentioned the word sacrifice, and there are so many sacrifices that high-performing athletes make, but they become choices. When yes. when you're passionate about something and you're fearlessly pursuing a goal, it, it's a choice rather than a sacrifice. And I think reframing that is is really important. Um, speaking you. of high-performing people, um, Kate Laframboise left a comment that says, Joanie Rochette was the first athlete I looked up to. I look up to Joanie still. Um, she's, a, she's an incredible human, just finished med school. So uh, that's inspiring for, for all of us. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we have another question here. This one is from Mrs. Osterreed's grade, I hope I said that right, um, grade three class at George Vanier Catholic Fine Arts School in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, so there's the class on the playground. Love that. Uh, the question is, and this is going to uh, Ohenawa first, uh, what is it like being at the Olympic and Paralympic Games? Uh, Ohenawa, we'll, we'll chat about that. But um, were there challenges you had to overcome? Yes. <laughs> so the first thing about being at the Games is an incredible experience. And I always look at the Olympic Games are like, as high performance athlete, you have world championships every year, some sport. Yeah, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Trying to take it in and enjoy the moment, but also focusing in, as you say, when all of your work comes down to that one critical moment. Mm -hmm. Amanda, how about you? What is that like for you and what were some of the challenges you had to overcome? Yeah, absolutely. So I haven't been to the Paralympic Games yet, but I was part of the village, which was at the Para Pan American Games. And it is definitely a shift. You are, you have a roommate, it's a small room. Uh, your way of life is completely altered when you go <laughs> stay at these villages. So it's cafeteria style eating. So um, food is different than what you're used to. You're exposed to so much stimulation, right? I remember one of our mentors, Marnie McBean, Olympic rower, um, warned us against uh, eating your way out of a medal <laughs> because the cafeteria is there 24 seven. There's even a McDonald's there. So yes. that was really good advice. Um, Carm, I'm going to come. Can I call you Carm? Are we at that place? Um, I'm going to come to you. Uh, there's a question coming through from the LMS and it is, what's your favorite part about watching the Olympics or Paralympic games? Ooh. as a fan <laughs> yes no it's uh it's a fantastic question yeah there's nothing more unifying than an olympic or paralympic games right we're all mm. rallying together and so invested in in the performances um of our athletes i love that um thanks so much and thanks to the schools for writing in for those questions i love it um amanda i'm wondering if we can go back to you and we can have a quick energy break okay so <laughs> says play air guitar <laughs> Oh, and I also didn't say if I don't say Simon says and you do it, then you have to sit down. <laughs> it's a little competitive, oh, but it's all fine. <laughs> okay, so Simon says play air guitar one more time. Simon says waddle like a penguin. <laughs> Simon says act like a monkey. <laughs> Simon says stand on one foot. Now put your foot down. Did anybody put their foot down? No. If you did, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and now Simon says, hug yourself. <laughs> Simon says, start patting your head. <laughs> Simon says, stop. Okay, pat again. <gasps> <laughs> and now <laughs> Simon says, sit down at your chair. Simon says, stand up. Now sit back down. No. Oh, <laughs> <almost. laughs> Perfect. Now Simon says, move like a robot. Oh, I'm sitting back down. Yes. 
Now freeze. Uh oh. <laughs> Harder than you think. <laughs> and now Simon says wave goodbye. <laughs> we're done the chat, but we're done the activity. We're all loose again, and we can uh, keep proceeding with more awesome questions from you guys. <laughs> so Armelina, she's could... working up a sweat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wish we could see all of you at home doing the robot. Yeah. But, uh, thanks. thanks. Thanks for that, Amanda. Loved it. Um, all right, well, since legacy was an important theme in our program this fall, we wanted to have a couple of our athletes show off items for a time capsule. So, Carmelina, let's start with yours. And I'm wondering, actually, if any of the kids at home have done their own time capsule. Yes, I would be wondering, too. <laughs> put it in the chat box if you have. Yeah, um, let us know. Let us know what you got. So, you know, this one is, it is a mask. I so. love that, Carmelina. I took the ice for a whole season trying to be Wonder Woman after seeing Gal Gadot <laughs> in the movie. So I need one of those masks. Um, I, I love it. And one. actually, before, um, before we move on to... To Jessica, Allison Smith says that Ryan Parker, Ryan and Parker, they're both in grade two, want to know if you still play soccer. Oh, that is a great question. I actually, not myself, which um, I need to get back into like co-ed, recreational soccer. That would be super fun. Um, but I actually train my friends now. So I'll train them, social distancing, of course. But I make <laughs> sure that uh, I, I can train some of the national team players still that are in the area. And uh, I keep active that way. That's amazing. Are you taking on any former ice dancing uh, clients that you could maybe coach? <laughs> That's not for you, I would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pack your patience. No problem. Um, Je Jessica, can we take a peek at your time capsule? What do you have for us? We can for sure. And I just got to apologize, guys. My other dog, who is not human sniffing, is uh, contributing to this conversation. Um, <laughs> I understand the need to, or the desire to be involved in this. Yeah, exactly. She thinks it's so cool. She wants to talk too. Um, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm just looking at a couple of comments, some really good questions coming through here. Oh, Hannah, I'm going to go to you for this one. Um, and it is from Sarah D in Vancouver, BC. And it's, what is the most important thing you learned in 2020? And what advice do you have for kids? So the most important thing um, I learned in 2020 was not to take things for granted. So true. That's great advice. Um, got a, a great question from Carrie McKecker. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, grade seven, eight class at Echo Central Public School uh, in Glencoe, Ontario. And Amanda, I'm going to come to you with this one. She said, did you ever doubt yourself? And if so, what helped with this? Everyone doubts themselves, right? In yeah. every facet, every part of life, there, there's, there's always doubt. And I think preparation can, can be a great reinforcement or a tool where we can celebrate the wins. Because when we're focused on, on a goal, it's easy to get um, you know, consumed and obsessive about it. But we have to remember the progress, as you said, that your coach sort of reminded you, you know, how far you've come. That's a great tool. Um, Carmelina, I'm going to go to you. Nicholas Oliveira has asked, um, do you get nervous before a game? And if so, how do you get rid of the nerves? Yeah, Tessa, I think I'll build on what you said. You know, planning and preparation was my was my confidence, was the reason I would go into games, you know, making sure I knew what uh, what I needed to do, uh, first of all, to be a good teammate, but to know the, the, the game plan, to know the opposition, you know, my uh, – <laughs> I like too that you say that you have to invest in your confidence. Um, sometimes we forget to sort of feed that um, that part of ourselves, and and you're right. We can rely on one another, rely on the team. There's such strength in that. Thank you for sharing. Wow, and what an amazing discussion today. Thank you so much again, Ohenawa, Amanda, Carmelina, Jessica. Um, so inspiring. I know there are so many nuggets of information, so many takeaways that I think we'll all leave this conversation really thinking about and it will be percolating and um, we'll all be inspired to make a difference uh, in our own lives, but also, you know, that of the communities. A big thanks to all of our champions who tuned in to watch today. Yes. We see you, we hear you, and we are grateful for you. Ooh. We hope everyone who joined in this experience learned some really valuable lessons about leadership, teamwork, and how our actions can impact our communities. After all, that's how we leave our mark. Now, uh, we want, we all know that we're less than a year out of the 2021 uh, Tokyo Games. 
crazy. It's coming up so quickly now. Uh, I hope that you're as excited as we are. I know you are. Um, we have more TCC. C, T triple C, <laughs> fun to share over the next year on this hashtag road to Tokyo. So be sure to register at uh, championchats.olympic.ca to join in this journey with us. Uh, we can't ha we can't wait to have you on board. Stay tuned for more Team Canada Champion Chats excitement and our winter chat in 2021. Oh no, winter. <laughs> um, in the meantime, check out all the awesome fall activity plans if you haven't already. Thanks to everyone for joining. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. See you. <laughs> <laughs>